You are... Can you hear me? Do not be alarmed. I mean you no harm. I wish only to hear your words, share your feelings and know your thoughts. May we please be friends? <laughs> May we please be friends? Ah, I see you found him. It's Ladeus. It's been a while. Too long, I think. Too long indeed for close collaborators. On this blessed occasion, I bring not only myself, but others who long to speak with you. You are of the Convocation. Emmett Selk at your service. 
Do I have the honor of addressing Hermes, chief overseer of Elpis? You do. You have traveled far for it. Given your facility's purpose, its remote location is something of a necessity. Would that I didn't have to rely upon a guide. Oh, you wound me. Have I not ever been an attentive and helpful friend? But moving along to more agreeable company, this one we chance to... Well, you certainly have her attention. Is she one of yours, Hermes? Her name is Meteon. It means shooting star. Hmm. If I may make an observation, her ether is terribly thin. I fear she might dissipate at any moment. Nor do I believe you've made a submission to the Bureau. I would remember such a concept if you had. I haven't, as you say. I judged it too early. She's a pet project of mine, still undergoing preliminary testing. But rest assured that I will attend in person ere long. Very well. Being an authority on flying life forms, I appreciate that you are exacting in your work. I shall look forward to your submission. If we have finished with the perfunctory chit-chat, I would discuss official matters. By my coming, I trust you already anticipate the subject. I have an inkling, yes. Please wait to the main building yonder. I shall join you as soon as I've returned these creatures to their homes. What's wrong, Hermes? The Nemostoma is missing. Hmm. I may have found it. A creature with the self-same ether as those there. Nestled in the boughs of a tree outside the grounds. You're saying they can climb with their sorry excuses for limbs? The fashion has been to imbue aquatic creatures with the power of flight, ever since the words of Mitron created a sky swimming fish. The Ambistomas, too, can fly if only slightly, and they could conceivably climb a tree. Whether they can come down safely, however... Excuse me. I'll help! Two! And what are we supposed to do with this lot? <laughs> May I suggest we split up? If you would be so good as to assist Hermes, Emmett Selk and I shall keep an eye on these adorable creations in the meantime.
This appears to be the place. And here is where we part ways. We will be discussing highly sensitive affairs. Only a select few may be privy to such knowledge, and that does not include someone who cannot or will not divulge their origins. What? Will I have to remove you by force? Let's hear them then, these reasons of yours. Who knows? If I deem your mysterious cause worthy, I may even be inclined to offer my assistance. I do not object to his attendance. Hermes, this is highly irregular. Perhaps, but I believe he can be trusted. Meteon would not have taken to him so quickly otherwise. Moreover, the presence of a third party may help me to maintain composure. <sighs> As you wish, then. Behave yourself, do you hear? So, it's finally happened, then. Aye. Van Daniel has declared his intention to step down, and named you as his preferred successor. In recognition of your knowledge and your works, the Convocation is giving the recommendation due consideration. As one who does not know you personally, I am to use my impartial eye to take your measure. And above all else, to ascertain your disposition towards the invitation. I understand that you and Van Daniel are close. He himself was once chief overseer of Elpis, after all. I should not be surprised if you knew before anyone else that he wished to relinquish his office. I did. He told me that when he fulfilled his purpose, he wished to pass the torch to me. A torch you seem none too pleased to accept. Are you so averse to serving on the Convocation? No, it's not that. For a humble researcher like myself to even be considered is an honor beyond words. No. What troubles me, what I struggle to come to terms with, is the very fact that Van Daniel is stepping down. Does this not mean that he will return to the star? Of his own volition, yes, like so many others have before him. Return to the star? Does that mean... die? Well now, that's not a word I hear often. Is that what you say here in Elpis? Mankind is the life of a Theris. Each of us, a drop of blood flowing through its veins, bearing sustenance. In our finite time upon it, tis our duty to make it a better place, that all who call it home, now and in future, may abide in happiness. To that end, we have dedicated ourselves to the pursuit of enlightened creation, and by our efforts did we transform this once untamed wilderness into the peaceful paradise you enjoy today. To return to the star whence we came is a privilege afforded to we who have so loved and nurtured it. 
a choice embraced by those who have lived their lives to the fullest, in service to our world. And when they depart upon this journey, it is beautiful, always. The fourteen are no exception. Tis believed no occasion is more felicitous than the fulfillment of one's duty. Our office becomes our lives, and to retire is to return, or so the majority of us hold. Some few have elected to eschew custom. Mayhap you feel Fan Daniel's deeds do not warrant his return. Yet you should know his accomplishments as well as any. During his time, he conceived of countless outstanding concepts. And channeling the wealth of experience he attained here in Elpis, he brought forth many new specimens. I know of all this. I do. It's just... I cannot fathom why someone so great and wise, who could still do so much good, would want to end it all. Oh no, I've made her upset. Forgive me, I know I requested your presence. Might I trouble you to take Meteon outside? A change of scenery would do her good.
Amazing, is it not? The Ampelos, one of our newest subjects. So, how are we coming along? They are a product of Elpis, and so named for their birthplace. A happy accident, born of the hands of a former researcher who loved beautiful blossoms. Unique for how they change color, to reflect the emotional state of those nearby. Though be it here or elsewhere, they are seldom seen in any hue save purest white. Reflect the emotional state, you say? By what means do they achieve this? In creation, there exists an energy wholly apart from ether, one driven by emotions. In like manner to how we manipulate ether, this flower is subject to the influence of said energy. While it has no will of its own, it is sensitive to the prevailing emotion in the vicinity and reacts by altering its color and vibrancy. Akasha? It is one of the unseen energies defined by Hanish alchemical theory. Though a gross oversimplification, some describe it as an essence influenced by feeling. Akasha. Though I'm not familiar with the term, your description suggests it is the self-same energy. Dynamis, we call it. And those entities like the Elpis flower, that have the ability to interact with this energy, converting emotions into tangible phenomena, are Antelekis. That you are, my dear. And no ordinary one at that. But the first, possessed of free will. Wait. A form of energy other than ether? Dynamis? I've never heard of such a thing. Hardly surprising. Dynamis cannot be seen, much less felt. And though its existence has long been theorized, we had no proof until the flower's serendipitous creation. What's more, Dynamis is far weaker than ether. Under normal circumstances, its effects are drowned out by the latter. On account of which, beings comprised of and reliant upon the ether, like you and I, are unable to make practical use of Dynamis. Tis a truly esoteric thing known to but a select few scholars. Intriguing. 
Then, given the limitations you described, why create Meteon? Our star, Etheris, is especially rich in ether. So much so that its name is derived from it. However, when we consider all energy in existence here and in the vast space beyond, Dynamis may account for as much as 68.3%. The more abundant form by far. Were we able to control it, we could open the door to limitless possibilities. Tis not unlike a gently flowing stream, unable to break through the dam of ether barring its path. But if we could imbue the stream with the vigor of a raging river... Ah, not that I have such grand ambitions. Nay, I merely wish to create a being that could traverse the Great Expanse. The relative scarcity of ether beyond the bounds of this star was a concern. And so, I looked to another source of energy by necessity. That being Dynamis. No wonder her ether is so thin. Precisely. Yours is thin too. Like an entelechy. Like me. So... Are we the same? Intellectus. Well, aren't we ungrateful? Mayhap I should revert you to the pathetic, faded thing you were. A deficit of ether alone does not an Entelechi make. It would, however, make it easier for you to interact with Dynamis. And limited though its influence may be, this quality could prove the difference between victory and defeat. You'd do well not to underestimate it. Oh dear. I'd forgotten about the poor fellow. He must excuse me a moment while I go and verify a few more things.